They say, well, let me let me just go raise some money and then I'll worry about whether I can get customers. And, and if 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 I don't, then what? What are, are they thinking about that or they're just not really thinking that far down the road? So I uh, given that despite the very positive funding outcome, far fewer than half of the startups actually raise money. So the question is, what happens to the rest? Uh, they do go back and try to improve their metrics having focused on metrics such as downloads and all the other non-revenue, non-monetary metrics, several of them do start looking at the option of uh, coming up with customer traction. However, this is where I think they make the second mistake and they create a very self-serving customer pool, such as people they know or people who they can directly influence or even if they were genuine real customers, maybe a set of few early adopters, and then they come back to you saying, listen, I spent zero money or close to zero money, and see, I got 25 paying customers, or depending on the depending on the sector, it might be 200 paying customers. So just imagine, had you given me 100,000 US dollars, imagine how, that, how many more I could get. So that is their second line of action, pretty commonly done, uh, except that I think investors are fairly smart now to recognize that that too isn't real traction. If I think about India, th there is kind of built-in scarcity in some parts of India in a sense, in that what's available in big cities like Mumbai and Delhi, for example, simply isn't available in the small towns, the tier two, tier three cities, or, or the rural parts of India. To what extent are entrepreneurs seeing that uh, scarcity as an opportunity to go serve those kind of markets? I have seen both kinds of situations. One, where entrepreneurs deliberately try to bridge the gap and even out the scarcity. And two, where they tried, tried, tried out a fairly broad-based approach and noticed that the maximum positive outcomes were coming from areas where there was an all scarcity. Here's an example for you. So there was this e-commerce website solely selling cosmetics, brand name cosmetics. Uh, now, brand name cosmetics are pretty commonly available because these were the regular brands. And, but despite that, they found that they got a pretty good traction in the northeastern part of India, uh, which they eventually realized was not well served by the supply chains of these cosmetic uh, companies. As a result, they started just shipping. In some cases, their courier companies would not access those areas, but the Indian Post, the postal department does. So they just started posting out these uh, these, these cosmetic uh, you know, products to them, and they made a very good business out of it. So like I said, you have absolutely found out the, you know, a significant opportunity in India, uh, just like there are others, such as absence of infrastructure and hence creating solutions around that. The fact is that there are pockets where there's a lot of scarcity, and it may not just be the rural or inaccessible areas such as you listed or I gave an example of. Sometimes it might also be that urban areas lack things, for instance, um, and this is kind of a really crazy example. There are, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's only one city in India, which is Goa, which allows motorbikes to be used as taxis. So where oh. you could get somebody to sit behind you on a motorbike and uh, be a taxi, and almost no other city does it. So now that there came a startup which was trying to aggregate these motorbike taxis, they did not see any reason why the bigger cities shouldn't have this also. So they have been lobbying to get into bigger cities, the biggest cities have not yet allowed it, but they have managed to open up some new cities. So they have located scarcities even in the reverse fashion, which means in more major metropolitan areas. Yeah, very interesting. So one of, one of the interesting challenges, it seems to me, in setting up new ventures, especially digital ventures today in India, is the, uh, the, the question about, do I do it on mobile? Do I do it on the web? You know. PC penetration is nothing like mobile penetration in India. What do you see happening in the in that regard today? Are people skipping web and going directly to mobile for e-commerce, for example, or, or are they doing one? Are they doing uh, migration to the other? How's that playing out? So the slogans, the two common slogans are mobile first or mobile only. And I have found that there is not even a single, at least in the e-commerce space, there's not even a single successful story coming out of either of those slogans. And the reason is that to get the user to download yet another app and use it is successful only when you're giving them an outrageous deal and continues to remain successful only as long as that outrageous deal is with you. Uh, the greatest success on mobile-related 
e-commerce and other transactions are coming from fairly large players who had already established a good business on the web and now are encouraging people to download their app. So though the amount of mobile mm-hmm. penetration and mobile internet penetration has far surpassed that of the desktop, uh, to use the mobile platform as your first platform hasn't yielded dividend yet. Uh, very interesting. So Mintra, for example, decided that it would shut down its web platform and migrate to mobile, but it was able to do that only after establishing a strong presence on the web in the first place. Is, th- is that the uh, prototypical example? That would be, but since you list Mintra, here's the example, uh, interesting part about that. So Mintra is now owned by Flipkart. Right. Now, just about the time when Mintra said that they would go app only, which none of us believed they would actually do, because why would you give up a channel of marketing was the conventional wisdom. But around the same time, they said that shortly after Mintra goes app only, Flipkart also would go app only. Now, uh, so, so Mintra, to that extent that we realized, was probably an experiment to see if Mintra works, then Flipkart which is probably 10x the size of uh, Mintra, and owns Mintra, would also move to app only. But that didn't happen. In fact, they are no longer even talking about it. So Mm. though they have not gone back to the web model, but the fact that the parent company who made the decision of taking Mintra app only has not done app only for its major, the the mothership, uh, does say something about the efficacy of that model. Yeah, interesting. So entrepreneurs may get uh, all enamored of the level of smartphone penetration, not only in India, but in other developing places too, Africa, Latin America, we have the same phenomenon, right? They get enamored of those numbers, but you're saying the consumer doesn't behave that way, and if you can't establish it first on the web, then maybe that's not the way to go. Absolutely, and the only exception would be applications which are intrinsically only uh, mobile. Such as For instance such as, for example, digital wallets, which means, you know, you can go to an offline retailer and pay digitally. Now, you are not going to carry your desktop or your web device. So, uh, barring such applications or maybe listening to streaming music on the go. So, those kind of applications which only make sense if you are on a mobile device, a moving device, which really is mobile. uh, I think that barring that, you have got to be web first. And that is, and this is not just my opinion. My opinion is driven by what I have observed in the you know, overwhelming majority. Yeah, yeah. What about tablets? Is there a role for tablets in India today or is it either mobiles or, or laptops and desktops? Okay, so I think that mobile phones are tablets today. Uh, you know, unlike the earlier, as in about like, I would say like five years ago when people wanted to have the sleekest and slimmest mobile phone, Uh, The emergence of the smartphone has just made mobile phones larger and larger. And even a global giant like Apple, uh, you know, earlier would not have these large phablets, that is, phones which are also tablets. But if you see, with every new generation of the phone, including the most recent 6S, I believe, they have allowed still some more space on the screen. I think that is a natural way to go. So tablets in the classic sense, which were like the iPads or something which have screens as large as your desktop, I do not see them being used as much, unless they were being used as a laptop as well as a tablet, but yeah. phones themselves have become tablets the way I see it. What other things are on your mind that, that might be interesting for entrepreneurs who are in the early stages of starting a business and who could learn something from India and from an investor in India? Mm-hmm.